my vision for the world is that we begin to understand each other from a place of not seeing color or race or belief systems, but we begin to understand ourselves as a human species that needs to evolve not alone or apart, but together. Your worth is your worth, and your worth is here right now. And all it's asking is for you to put your consciousness on it and know right in this moment, I'm, I'm, I'm amazing. I am sickalicious, amazing, fantastic human being, and I don't owe anyone anything, and no one owes me anything. My great grandmother was a medicine woman by the name of Mamal. She was from Africa. And my grandfather was a Native American Blackfoot Indian. So I had a very, very interesting combination of two very powerful people growing up in my bloodline. I think when we step into a place of meditation, we step into the heart, we step back into ourselves. And when we step into ourselves, we're able to connect with nature, we're able to connect with other people, we're able to connect with our ancestors, we're able to connect with life. Mostly, I don't show people how to meditate, I show them how to tap into their power, and I want them to find their own connection to meditation. To me, I think every form of meditation should be different for each person. I think that if we try to fit it into a box, then we're missing the whole understanding of spirituality, because spirituality is your own personal journey. Everything is simplistic. It's not calculus, it's not trigonometry. It is simplistic that a five-year-old can understand. So you know exactly what it is. The thing is, you're trying to think so much, you're trying to be like, I don't know, I don't know, I don't know, because you're putting pressure and you're judging yourself instead of just sitting back and going, what do I wanna do? Uh, I wanna do gardening right now. Okay, let's go do gardening. When I was um, 29 years old, I woke up one morning and my kidneys gave out. I went into seven rolling seizures, and by the time I get to the hospital, within five minutes of being on a hospital stretcher, I suffocated to death and died. After I came out of my coma after months, I was told I was never gonna walk again and that I was paralyzed. And I had a, my ancestors were there in the room with me and spirit form. And they told me that I could heal my legs, but it was gonna take me some time, but I was gonna be, I had to be comfortable being in a wheelchair. But at that point, while I was in the hospital, I knew who I was. I already identified with being Shaman Dirk, but it became more clear when I came back from dying. And the truth of the matter is, is that in order for us to get back to our truth, we have to simplify things. The tribal markings experience for me was in shamanism, a warrior before he goes, he gets marked because you don't know what his life journey is gonna be. He could come back or he might not come back to the tribe. When a shaman becomes a shaman, there's in, in a lot of ancient tribes, they do markings. I was being marked before I went through this transition to be brought back into my life, to be where I am today. And now I'm in a different transition in my life right now. I'm in the transition where I'm stepping in front of the world in a huger way. And I feel this makes the best time for me to re-establish that energy for myself mm -hmm. of remembering when, of what I went through, and also the journey that's ahead.